In this series, we're gonna take your prom dress drawing and then we're gonna lay down the base colors using chart pack markers as well as flesh tone and hair color. And then we're gonna move on to doing color pencil, ink, as well as mixed media for doing all of the effects for the sparkles, sheer, metallic shoes, as well as diamond earrings. Now for those of you who are following the video series for rendering for fashion, we've already worked on doing a swimsuit girl, as well as learning different flesh tones according to the different ethnicities. Then we moved on and we worked on a white dress shirt with denim jeans, blonde hair, winter coat, glossy boots. And now we're gonna finish up by learning to do the prom dress with the sheer silk as well as sparkles. Now, since all of you have already gone through the process of doing these three renderings with me, once we move on here to this one, I'm gonna move a lot quicker. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time telling you how to use the paper and the markers and how to do hair and such and such. If you just found this video and this is totally brand new to you, I highly recommend to go back to these videos here so you can learn how to use the tools correctly. All right, so we're gonna start working on the base color for our prom dress. The tools that you'll be needing for this video is gonna be your Ben Fang rag marker paper. Students who are taking my class, you're also gonna want the handout for the girl that we're gonna be using for this demonstration as well as your walking pose croquis and your example of the mannequins with the cast shadows. You're also gonna want a swatch of your sheer fabric, your silk base layer, as well as your sparkly uh, top layer. You'll need a, either a mechanical pencil or an 2H pencil sharpened, as well as a detail eraser, a regular eraser some kind of a cloth for cleaning your area. And then I have another cloth for my markers. In this, uh, in this demonstration, I'm using my light sand as well as pink for doing her skin tones. And then I'm using the same exact pink for doing her dress. Make sure you have a marker that matches back to your fabrics. And then for her hair, I'm using clear blender as well as craft brown and a little more of my flesh tone. On her eyes, I was doing a pale lime. And then down here for her shoes, we're gonna turn these into a metallic silver shoes. And I'm starting with a base layer of a cool gray number two. All right, let's get started. Okay, so for those of you who are following my class and you already have the handout for the prom dress girl, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this exact dress together, and the very first thing we're gonna do is the base colors. Now for some of my students who want to do their own dress design, let's go ahead and talk through the requirements for this particular project. Up here in the bodice chest area, we're gonna do a sheer layer. So this will either be something like a colored tool or a tool with sparkles, or potentially you're gonna do a sheer silk. You need to have some kind of a binding along the neckline. Down here for the main body of the dress, we're gonna do that in silk. Then we're gonna have this overlay on the dress here, and it's going to be a sheer with some kind of a print or sequins. Preferably, you'll wanna do sequins because you're gonna learn the whole technique for making this. Again, so the sequin layer is gonna be here on this outside of the dress, and it'll be up here in the bodice as well. So if you wanna do your own design, go ahead and do that now, following along with those parameters. For those of you who are beginners in my class, go ahead and take this drawing, and now's the time to transfer it onto the front side of your Ben Fang paper, and either use a 2H pencil and get it as sharp as possible, or you could use a mechanical pencil. So go ahead and transfer your drawing to the Ben Feng paper now.
All right, so now that you've transferred the drawing here onto your Ben Feng paper, what I want to do is with the beginner students, I want to go through and take a closer look with this to make sure that you didn't miss anything before we start coloring this assignment. All right, so taking a closer look at this, we have her hair, her eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth, ears, everything. The important thing is down here. So on her collar, this is going to be a binding, so make sure you do a really good job of tracing that off accurately. Over here we have the seam for her sleeve, and then you can see the little cap sleeve, and it's a set-in sleeve construction. And again, this is going to be a sheer layer, so you're still seeing her shoulder underneath. Double check both sides of yours right now. So again, here you can see this is her shoulders going up underneath the sheer of her sleeves. Then as we move along, do an extremely light center front seam, as well as having your French darts, make them very light as well. Moving down onto the drape of the skirt area. So one line here is going to be our sheer line. And this is going to go underneath her thumb, but it goes in front of these fingers behind. So you can see the line coming through here and going all the way down to the hem. Again, down here we can see this is the sheer layer of her dress, which goes behind her thumb, but it's in front of these fingers here. On the other side, where we have her arm coming down, you can still see the arm a little bit here behind the sheer side of the skirt. And down in this area, we have a little bump for her wrist bone and her hand, which is going behind the solid part of her dress. Down here at the hemline, we have the trumpets for the skirt, not to be confused with the lines here for her legs that start heading up underneath the skirt. Now if you're doing your own design, make sure that the, the lines here for the trumpets don't get confused with the lines on your leg. So I intentionally put like a trumpet in the middle of this leg, in the middle of that leg, to avoid having these lines touch each other. You can also see here where the trumpets are in front of the leg, so it's not confusing with the lines for the leg itself. Of course, make sure you have your knees, and then down here on the shoes, we have everything in its place. Now, one last thing I want to do is, here in the bust area, when I start coming in doing some shading, I kind of want to know where is the bottom of her underwire. Let's go ahead and get that now from our original croquis. So here, I'm going to come back to my walking pose croquis. And I'm going to match my girl back on top of the croquis. Now what I'm going to do here is the underwire from the bra on her croquis, the very bottom edge of the underwire, I'm just going to draw an extremely light line to follow that. And later on, I'm going to erase that completely. I just want to know where that is for when I start shading for her bust. Also on my girl, I want to show just a little bit of cleavage. So if I follow the inside underwire and I come up here to the edge of her dress, we can put that in there. Now that we've successfully traced off our girl onto the Ben Feng paper, the next thing you want to do is you want to find markers to match back to your fabric. For the beginners in my class, we're going to use the same exact pink that we've already been using along with our flesh tones. If you're doing this on your own, go ahead and go through the same system that we've used in the other videos for finding a marker to match back to your fabric. For the rest of us, go ahead and take out your uh, flesh tone, as well as your pink that goes with your flesh tone, and then something for her hair color. 
In this case, I'm going to use light sand, pink, and craft brown. Let's go ahead and we're going to come in and we're going to get our arrows for the light source direction. And again, I like to do my arrows here on the women's wear right side of her body. And then those of you who are taking my class, go ahead and take out your walking pose mannequin. Fold this in half. And what we'll do is the darker side, we're going to attach it here to the front. So now we'll have our reference point for the shadows and highlights from our mannequin. And then you'll see it here when we flip it over and we start coloring from the back. Take a minute and just make sure there's no pencil that transferred onto the back side of your paper because you don't want your markers to smear it around. And then also wipe this off carefully with a dry cloth. All right, so the most confusing thing about coloring something that has sheer layers is you're gonna get lost on where the sheer is and is not. What I like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and color everything that is sheer right now before I do flesh tones or anything. Also, since we're using the Ben Feng paper and we're gonna be coloring from the back, whatever marker you use first is gonna go through to the front of the paper and be more dominant. So if you're going to have your skin tone with a sheer over the top, you want to have the color of the sheer fabric first and then we'll do the skin tones second. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is my sheer layer which goes over the top of her skin. Here you can see the cap of the sleeve is going up and around and behind her arm right there. Now I've come in to get the sheer layer going all the way across her chest and it goes a little bit above her shoulder here and here and I'm also including the binding around her neck. Now I've come in and I got one side of her bodice and while it's still semi-dry, semi-wet, I can come in here and just emphasize a little bit of her bust. And again, this is the light source on this side. And this is the layer where it's going to be silk underneath and then I'm going to have the sheer layer on top. It's going to be all in this bust area. So I'm starting to show a little bit of some definition of her bust and some shadows, and this is a little bit denser and darker than the sheer layer up here. And for the beginners in my class, basically when you're coming in and you're doing this shadowing for the bust area and a little bit on her rib cage and stomach, just come over here and look at what your mannequin looks like in the direct light. And now all I'm doing is I'm coloring the other side and while it's semi-dry, semi-wet, I'm coming in here and hitting my shadows underneath the bust. And again, underneath here is a solid silk layer, so this is going to be a little bit darker of the pink color. All right, let's take a look at this from the front. Again, the upper part here in her chest and sleeves area is just this sheer layer. So I'm just putting one thin layer of the pink down and no shadows, no highlights. Down in the bodice now is where we have her silk layer underneath here. So I go back and I'm stacking my colors. I'm adding some shadows and some highlights to make it look silky, but also to make it look a little bit thicker or more dense. Later on what we'll do is we'll put the sequin layer on top of the silk here in this bodice area, but we're going to leave this sheer area alone. Let's come down in here and we're going to start working on the drape of the dress. Alright, looking at the front here, the next thing we're going to work on is the drape for her dress. So there's a couple things going on. There's going to be the silk layer that's underneath, and then there's going to be the sequin sheer layer that's on top. 
for the very first part, we don't want to do any shadowing or stacking of any kind. We just need to get a nice flat base color on here, exactly like we did up in the chest and sleeves area. If you take a look at this example here, when I come over to the back of this, basically what we're doing is one layer wash of your color. Now because this is such a large area, basically when I do my wash, I'm going to start at the hem and work my way up to the bodice and work all the way through on her skirt. And then at some point I'm rotating it so I can come in to get the finishing parts. And then of course you'll want to really be careful to come in here and go around her thumb, but you're still going in front of the fingers that are behind the dress. Also on this side, you'll notice that some of the dress here, the color is covering up her arm, and this is correct. Here you can see where the pink sheer is going in front of her arm color. And then down here, we have the sheer is in front of all of these fingers behind, but her thumb is nice and clean with no pink on it at all. All right, let's take a look at this now from the front. Okay, so you can see here now we have just a very basic flat wash of one color, and we were not worried about any highlights or shadows or anything. So this is the same as up here in the chest area. Now we wanna move on and the skirt drape area, which is made with the silk fabric underneath, this is going to have shadows and highlights. So if we look here, we can see that we're coming in and we're emphasizing that these are some trumpets and folds that are going along the bottom hem of the dress, and then there's shadows and highlights coming up towards her waist area. Now you can see what happens is there's going to be dark underneath and behind the folds, and then it's very bright and well lit on the top. So that's what we're looking to achieve here. You also want to keep in mind a little bit of the shadows, so maybe one side of the dress is a little bit darker than the other side of the dress. Now when we do the silk part of the dress, we're still going to leave all of this alone out here for the sheer area. Don't do any shadows or highlights out here. and let's get our light source direction. Now I already have my base color of pink on here, so there's no white paper left. All I'm doing now is emphasizing all of the shadows in between each of the folds from the trumpet on her dress. Now I'm gonna do these quicker, kind of a dry brush stroke. That way the layers will stack really well, and I'm also kind of showing the fabric the direction the fabric is traveling by using the shine and the light. Now while it's still semi-dry, semi-wet, I want to keep in and keep stacking some more behind the folds and in between the, the layers to really emphasize the trumpets that are sticking out into the spotlight area. Again, you always want to keep referencing your eye back to the arrow that's showing the light source and work more on the opposite sides of all the folds to really get these darker and have them pop up off the paper a lot better. So basically we can see here, there's the two trumpets where the dress is starting to turn around the corner, and then there's two more here right in front of her legs. And so pretty much we're just trying to get this effect where there's some um, darkness behind here and here, and then there's lights coming down from this 
and streaking back up, heading towards her waist area. Of course, later on, we can emphasize this some more with some white color pencil, but for now, we're just getting our base layer on here. All right, so let's take a look at this from the front. So you can see now we're getting the trumpets for the dress, the silky dress, and we didn't touch anything for the sheer on the outside layers. All right, so I'm gonna erase those light lines that I had on here now that I have the shading for her bus cup. All right, at this stage now, we're ready to come in and start doing her flesh tones and her hair color. All right, so what I've done is I've gone in and I've put my layers down for her face. Of course, then I would move into doing the second tones and then I let it dry completely and I came in and I got my hard shadows following along with what it looks like here on the mannequin. Something else that I was doing as well, I was taking my colorless blender and I would put that down on her hair first and then I would come in and I would hit it with my dark craft brown as well as some of my uh, flesh tone light sand. And then when the two would mix, I would come in and just get my shadows and stuff while it was totally wet with the clear blender. And I'm gonna use this to do another variation of blonde hair. Now during the whole time that I've been doing this, I've just been coloring right over her eyes. If you wanted to do a hazel eye color, I have my light sand flesh tone, it's all over her eyes. And now I can come in while it's totally bone dry and just hit some pale lime exactly right on the irises. And now what will happen is the pale lime green color will mix with the flesh tone color and give it that hazel look. To get the color to pop even more, what I'll do is I'll let it dry completely and then I'll hit it with pale lime one more time. All right, so I stacked her eye color one more time after it had dried completely. Now at this point, we're ready to start coloring the chest area here. That's gonna be her skin behind the sheer layer on top. But it also continues with her arms coming down out here into space. The technique we wanna use is we are gonna color her arm from underneath here all the way out onto here and back underneath the sheer right here as well. Now when we take a look at this from the back side, when we start coloring this, we want to make sure to not color on top of the binding area. Now while it's semi-dry, semi-wet, I'm going to come in here, just emphasize her cleavage a little bit. This is the shadow side of her body. I'm gonna come in here just one more time while it's still wet. And I'm just gonna make this side of her shoulder look a little darker than the other side. Now take a really close look at this. This is where her shoulder stops but the shirt itself still goes a little bit above that. So be really careful that you don't color all the way to the top of her shirt because this is supposed to show her skin is underneath. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna color her arm that goes underneath her sleeve and then comes out into the light and then eventually it goes behind the sheer layer on her skirt so we can still see a little bit of her wrist and her hand. Now once this is semi-dry, semi-wet, I want to reference the light direction. We're going to come over here and we're going to start adding in some of our shadows. This is going to be our mid-tones.
For the parts of her skin that are going underneath the sheer layers, you don't want to get too crazy and do all your mid-tones inside of there. So just leave those areas alone. Okay, so you can see basically we're coloring her arm coming from underneath the sleeve out into the light. And then I'm coming in while it's semi-dry, semi-wet and getting some of my mid-tones and cast shadows inside of here. All the way down with her elbow. And then of course my single layer, I was coloring going down here, going behind the sheer layer of her dress. But when I do my shadows and mid-tones, I stop when I get to here because I don't want it to get too muddy and dark behind here. So you can see here when we're getting the hand, her thumb is nice and clean. There's no pink on it or here. And then these fingers are going behind the skirt, the sheer part of her skirt, but we still need to throw some color in there. Just don't stack it more than once. While her arm was semi-dry, I came in and I hit all of my cast shadows. All right, so let's take a look at this from the front. So here we can see the pink sheer of her sleeve is sticking out further than her shoulder. The binding on the neckline has no color from her flesh tones at all, so it's pure pink. And then of course the flesh tone stops here at the top of her dress. We did a little bit of some cast shadow for in between her bust, a little bit of shadowing here on her shoulder. And then the arms come all the way out. The thumb is on top of the fabric. These fingers are behind the fabric. And then of course on this side, her arm comes out and then it goes behind this layer again. And we can see just a little bit of her wrist bone and her hand here. Now we're ready to come down here and get her legs and her shoes. So here you can see where her leg skin goes underneath the sheer layer, but it stops at the silk layer. And then when I'm doing my secondary mid-tones and shadows, I'm starting below the sheer layer so I don't want to keep stacking and adding too much color tone inside the sheer area. So I have like my hem shadow, shadows for the knees, and then coming down into the tops of her feet. Now since this is a walking pose, this leg here going back in the space should be really dark here below the knee and behind this leg. So I'm gonna let this dry completely and then I'm gonna come back and stack this a third time. All right, while I'm letting her right leg dry, what we'll do is we're gonna come in here and color the shoes. For this assignment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these shoes look like they are sparkly silver. How I'm gonna do this is we're gonna do our base color using the cool gray number two. Now, if you don't have cool gray number two and you wanted to do something else, you could also do your base color with the same matching back to your dress or something else that you have in mind and I'll still be able to show you how to make it sparkly. All right, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna get my base layer and I'll just puzzle piece each shoe separately. And then while it's still semi-dry, semi-wet, I'll come in here and I'll hit it with some mid-tones in my shadow areas. Now I don't wanna put down too many layers of color 
because this is going to start getting darker and darker and darker and we want it to look metallic like silver so we don't want them to get too dark looking. At this stage now her legs are totally dry and this is the foot that is walking and is going back into space. So from the knee going down we need to make this leg look a lot darker. So I'm going to come in here and stack my flesh tone for a third time while it's totally bone dry. Now also I can come into the legs here and I just want to get a little more of a cast shadow underneath the hem from her dress and going down the shadow side of her leg. And you're always referencing back to what you see here on the mannequin. And of course, her arms are bone dry as well. I just want to come up here and emphasize a few more cast shadows. And for these third layer of shadows, I'm making sure to not do any of it underneath the sheer on her dress or hands or arms. For her thumbnail, already while it was wet, I gave it some nice pink color on there. And now that it's bone dry, I can come in and get this one more time. Basically, I'm just making it look like she has pink fingernail polish on. Okay, let's clean up our area and we're going to take a look at this from the front. All right, so we got her hair color done, her skin tone, eyes, lips color. Underneath here we have a, her skin tone is going behind the sheer layer. And then this binding right here is still pure pink without having any skin tone on that binding. And you can see the separation between her shoulder and the actual shoulder from the garment. And then of course we have the bust, bust cup, a little bit of shaping, as well as having shadows and highlights on her arms. This arm is going behind the sheer layer and this hand is in front of the sheer layer and some of these fingers are behind it. We have our trumpets here with all the shadows and highlights and then of course we have her legs coming out and then of course we have our base layer for her silver shoes. All right so we finished up getting our base layer for our model in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our textures with color pencil. And then eventually we're going to ink this and then finish it with some sparkle effects on top.